All right, welcome to the second video of this Native Advertising Masterclass. Now, in these videos, I am sharing with you some key insights from scientific research on native advertising on online news websites. And um, we are now going to look at how native advertising works and also at which factors may contribute to an effective and sustainable implementation. Starting with the importance of transparency. Now, as I showed you before, most readers do have difficulties to recognize native ads as such because, uh, well, the tone of voice, the content and the look really mirrors the editorial news, news content. So, um, for instance, this article, uh, this is about women's health behavior in relation to their chances of getting cancer. Well, when you look at the headline and the topic of the advertisement, um, it could really be just an article that has been written by a journalist. So, well, as you can see, sometimes the native ads are um, simply indistinguishable from the normal editorial news articles. Now, to maintain the line between what is advertising and what is news, um, there is some legislation and it is mandatory uh, for news websites to add a disclosure label to their advertisements. Think about, for instance, sponsored content or advertisement. Now, you may think that the deceptive part of native advertising will be resolved by simply asking news websites to add a disclosure label, right? Well, unfortunately, it turns out that there are still some issues with these disclosure labels. First of all, there is no really uh, good legislation on how these disclosure labels should look like. And therefore the disclosures still widely vary and they are definitely not always clear. So you may recognize some of these labels. Um, so what you often see in practice is that instead of the word advertisement, which is quite explicit, uh, many publishers use words such as brand publisher or brand voice or, uh, for instance, partner content. So you may wonder which labels, uh, well, are actually working and which labels do help readers to become aware that they are viewing an advertisement and not a news article. Well, one of the first studies on native advertising, uh, which is, has been conducted by Wojdynski, um, showed that more implicit disclosure wordings, such as brand voice, um, well, that those kind of words are not really effective. In this case, only 2 to 3% of the readers recognize the native ad as such, which is really uh, almost no one. Well, um, what he also found was that more explicit wordings, such as advertisement and sponsored by uh, brand X, were in this study, um, well, much more effective. But as you can see, um, even though uh, they worked much better, reader's advertising recognition was still very low. So it was somewhere between 12 to 13%. So these researchers were wondering, okay, how could that happen? Because uh, these words are quite explicit. So what they subsequently did is they conducted a follow-up study in which they used an eye tracker uh, to simply follow where readers are looking uh, on the website um, when they are viewing a page with a native ad. Now, this eye tracker showed that um, when readers are exposed to a page with a native ad, that they often directly look at the headline of the native ad and then they skip to the text. And just as that they um, ignore often the banner ads that surround uh, the editorial content, many readers also completely missed the label when it was positioned above the headline of the article near the top of the page because, well, they simply go directly to the article. Um, and this is a problem because this is actually a place where many labels appear. On the other hand, when the researchers positioned the label in the middle of the page, halfway through the article, um, which you almost never see, but they wanted to test that, 
readers uh, were indeed much more likely to notice the label. So what this study suggests is that readers have indeed uh, difficulties to recognize a native ad as such, even when you add a label. And also um, that when you uh, well do add a, a disclosure label, you cannot assume that suddenly all readers are aware that they are viewing a native ad. And what this study learns us is that it is always super important that you always test everything. So um, also many different aspects that can influence the effectiveness of a disclosure label. So in this case, it is for instance, not just about what word you are using. So it's not just about whether you use the word advertisement or brand voice, but it is also about other important aspects such as the visual prominence of the label or, uh, well, in this case, the position of the label on the page. So using the right words and positions for labels um, can actually uh, contribute to the effectiveness of a disclosure label. However, there may be advertisers who actually believe that it is a good thing that readers do not notice the label. Because some advertisers fear that once readers recognize the labels and they indeed become aware that they are looking at an advertisement, that they do not trust the content of the article anymore. And publishers have actually uh, told me that sometimes advertisers really even ask them to make the label less prominent and clear. Now, following these concerns and this line of thinking, most academic research on native advertising has been focused on readers' persuasion knowledge. I've already mentioned uh, this before. And persuasion knowledge is the knowledge that people use to recognize and cope with advertisements. Well, and some researchers also distinguish between a cognitive dimension, so-called conceptual persuasion knowledge, and that is really uh, related to readers' recognition of an advertisement, and um, on the other hand, attitudinal persuasion knowledge. And that is related to readers' critical feelings um, towards an advertisement. Now, what most of the previous studies on uh, advertising and also native advertising show is that when readers' conceptual persuasion knowledge is activated, which means that they are aware that they are viewing an advertisement, even uh, either because of the uh, content characteristics or because of the label, um, that they often become more critical and defensive. Um, so they have more attitudinal persuasion knowledge. Now, people often feel uh, resistance against advertisements and they want to protect themselves against persuasion attempts because, well, we humans, we don't really want to be uh, unwillingly influenced. However, some studies on hybrid advertising forms, such as native advertising, did not find this direct relationship between readers' conceptual persuasion knowledge, so their advertising recognition, and readers' critical attitudes and evaluations. Now, this suggests that the extent to which readers' advertising recognition leads to either more uh, or less negative evaluations can be influenced by other factors. Now, one of the factors that might influence how uh, negative readers uh, respond when they become aware that they are looking at an advertisement and that we also wanted to further investigate is readers' evaluations uh, of to what extent they feel that the advertiser and news website is transparent about the native ad. So um, research in the context of sponsored blog posts from influencers showed already, for instance, that uh, feelings of deception can actually strengthen consumers' negative responses towards advertising when they become aware that they are viewing an ad. And it may therefore be the case that when news media and advertisers are actually highly explicit and transparent about the, about the native ad, that readers um, actually appreciate this and subsequently respond more positively compared to when uh, a less um, explicit disclosure, for instance, for instance, is being used. 
So in one of our studies, we wanted to investigate the influence of so-called perceived sponsorship transparency. And this sponsorship transparency is the extent to which readers perceive that the native ad makes, uh, makes it clear to them that it is actually paid content from an advertiser. And in this study, what we wanted to do is uh, we wanted to see if we can increase these transparency perceptions among readers through um, changing the disclosure labels. Now, as I mentioned before, the disclosures that news websites are currently using widely differ. Um, the Onion, for instance, uses uh, the disclosure branded content. Um, now, this label actually says nothing about the name of the advertiser or whether someone paid for the piece. Um, it doesn't really contain a lot of information. Then another example, uh, the BBC, they also have native ads. And they use a disclosure label that is already a little bit more explicit. Uh, they state advertisement feature presented by, and then followed by the brand name, in this case, Samsung. Okay, so now you know the name of the advertiser and the wordings, um, uh, and the wording advertisement, uh, that actually suggests that, the pay, that uh, there is some kind of brand who is paying for it. And then the third example, um, this is from the news website, the New York Times. And this one is the most detailed one. Um, this is actually an additional disclosure label. And this disclosure label really explains the creation process of the ads um, as an addition. And they position this additional information below the article. So it says the news and editorial staff of the New York Times had no role in the preparation. Now, this additional information about native advertising might actually be really helpful because in one of my previous studies, um, I found that even though many readers recognize a native ad as such, even if that's the case, many of them are still a little bit confused. So in my study, for instance, many readers th still thought that the ad had been created by a journalist, so one of the journalists that are working at the news website. So what I wanted to do in this study is I wanted to see if uh, we can increase the transparency um, of a native ad through the disclosure labels by, um, well, adding more information to it. Um, and that might be important for these transparency perceptions. Well, first, uh, in the news context, it might be um, especially important to provide the name of the source, or in this case, the advertiser, as uh, previous research shows that readers really want to know the source of the articles of, uh, that, that appear on the news websites, well, which is uh, kind of obvious. Then um, another important thing for news media, that is the divide between the advertising and editorial departments because readers want their journalists to work independently. And last but not least, it might be valuable to provide more information about why these native ads appear on the website. As previous research also showed that readers really like to know why certain decisions are being made by the news outlet. So based on that information from previous research, we created and tested uh, these four more and less detailed disclosure labels. And we tested this in an online experimental study in which we used uh, a native advertisement from, from the brand Spa Water. Now, in this study, all participants read uh, the same native ad from Spa Water and they saw one of these four disclosures. So the first one, partner content, contained little information says nothing about the name of the advertiser or if someone paid for it. Then um, the second one was sponsored by Spa Water. Um, and here, well, the wordings sponsored by already suggest that someone is paying for it. And um, Spa Water, well, that's the name of the advertiser. So this label already contains a little bit more information. And then we had the two uh, most detailed disclosure conditions. 
And they both also contained the label sponsored by Spa Water, but uh, we also provided some additional information. So, I'm sorry. So, um, one label um, really focused on um, the distinction between the editorial and commercial departments of the news website. And the other one focused on uh, the importance of um, advertising revenue to sustain the news website. So, um, well, the participants were invited to uh, click on a link to take to participate in this online study. And they subsequently saw one of these four conditions, um, one of these four native ads from Spa Water. Um, and the native ad was uh, constantly the same, but we only changed the disclosure label. And we made the disclosure label quite prominent. Um, and we did that on purpose because we really wanted to test uh, the content of the label. Now, what you see in the results is that um, in this study, readers' advertising recognition was quite high, uh, probably also because of the prominence of the disclosure label. And we also mentioned the advertiser once in the text. But as you can see, there was still a difference of 20% in advertising recognition between the readers who saw the native ad with the partner content label and the readers who saw the native ad with one of the more um, detailed disclosure labels. So with the detailed disclosure labels, over 80% of the readers recognized uh, the native ad as such. Now, we saw even uh, larger differences in results when we asked the readers about why they thought they were looking at an advertisement. So among the readers who saw the native ad with the partner content label, only 4.4% uh, of the readers mentioned the label as the reason why they thought they were looking at an advertisement. And furthermore, they were much more looking at, um, well, the article itself, for instance, or they simply said, well, it was just uh, a wild guess. Whereas when we provided the most uh, detailed disclosure labels, over 40% of the readers mentioned um, themselves something like, okay, I saw this in this label, or I saw a disclosure label. And uh, well, these results uh, from disclosure recall, um, we saw this actually back in the uh, perceived sponsorship transparency among readers. So, oh, I'm sorry. So um, when we used the disclosure label um, sponsored by Spa Water instead of partner content, we already saw an uh, increase in perceived sponsorship transparency. And this transparency further increased when we used uh, one of the two detailed disclosure labels. And between the detailed disclosure labels, there was no difference. And an additional analysis showed that this increase in sponsorship transparency subsequently positively influenced readers' credibility evaluations of the native ads of the advertisers and also uh, from the news websites in general. So what this study suggests is that yes, disclosure and advertising recognition often uh, does result into more critical and negative evaluations. However, when you make the disclosure label really detailed and you are actually super clear to the reader, readers may actually respond less negatively towards the native ads when they um, when they recognize them as such because uh, well it's more transparent and readers really value this transparency now you may wonder okay so if transparency is so super helpful and readers appreciate it why don't news media then directly make their label really transparent and explicit. Well, I think I can uh, make a guess based on uh, a more practical A-B test that I've also performed on uh, one of the largest Dutch news websites. So in this A-B test on the news website, The Telegraaf, we compared uh, the label that they were currently using, and that was partner content with the more explicit label, namely uh, provided by, followed by the name of the advertiser, 
or the logo of the advertiser. And in this case, it was an uh, insurance company named Real. Now, in terms of advertising recognition and transparency, this practical test actually showed the same results as the previous study. So again, when we used uh, the more explicit label, in this case provided by Real, um, perceived sponsorship transparency went up, also advertising recognition went up, and that resulted, especially the transparency, resulted into more positive evaluations. So same results. However, this practical test also showed something else. And that was that much less people clicked to read the article when we used the more detailed disclosures that said provided by Real. So when we used um, provided by Real, readers were more likely to recognize the ad as such, but they were also less likely to click on it, probably because of the persuasion knowledge. On the other hand, readers who do click on the native ad evaluated the native ad more positively compared to the readers with the um, native ad that contained the label partner content. Now, this is probably because with partner content, you have a little bit more clickbait um, because with this label, readers also spend less time looking at the nat native ad. Um, so it might be the case that in this case, readers are clicking on it, thinking that they are going to read a news article and then they end up with reading a native ad. However, the thing is that news websites in practice often get paid per reader that clicks to read and view the native ad. And advertisers uh, in general also really value clicks. So they also look at um, the click through rate. So how many readers are clicking on it um, when they're looking at the effectiveness of an advertisement. So as a news website, these kind of decisions are really difficult because you have to make a trade-off. For instance, in this case, it's either more clicks, but also more uh, feelings of deception and more clickbait, or less clicks, but then more positive evaluations. These kind of trade-offs are, um, well, definitely difficult to make um, and to think about, um, but therefore I do think it's super important to combine these insights from practice with scientific insights because as scientists we can easily say like okay uh, make the label more transparent but well things uh, are in practice often uh, still a little bit different so what you see in practice unfortunately is that you also uh, see that there are still publishers who choose uh, the revenue on the short term over doing the thing that is uh, maybe in readers best interest so quite recently, an article uh, appeared on the website of Teen Vogue. Um, and that article was titled, How Facebook is Helping to Ensure the Integrity of the 2020 Elections. Well, this article was a little bit weird in its tone, but also um, it was really praising Facebook. And Facebook actually received in the past a lot of criticism during the US elections. So it was really a weird article, not really critical. So some readers were criticizing this article on Twitter. And uh, well, the webcare wasn't great. <laughs> One webcare um, person actually just responded with, well, uh, literally, I don't know. I also don't know what this is. So then suddenly after a day full of questions and criticism, um, they changed the article and the byline appeared with the text, editor's note, this is sponsored editorial content. So in the end, this article appeared to be a native ad from Facebook without any disclosure. Now, well, the reader subsequently responded uh, really angry and confused, uh, like, what the fuck is this? And um, well, Team Folk, uh, next response was, okay, uh, this is getting out of hand. We are just going to remove the article. Now, I don't know how you would respond as a reader, but I would personally never believe Team Vogue anymore because, uh, well, when it writes something about Facebook, I would always be unsure, like, okay, is this editorial content or is this maybe a hidden uh, native advertisement without a disclosure? So I do think that they do a lot of harm to themselves uh, by um, making these kind of decisions. 
So if I were working at a news website, I would go for transparency. Um, so just quickly to sum up, um, just once more the an overview of characteristics of a transparent disclosure based on previous research. So clear language is important. Um, guaranteeing the independence of the journalist is important. And uh, visual characteristics such as the position of the label is also um, really important. Now, if you want to read more, I also put some resources resources, sorry, in the uh, description of this uh, video. All right, and that was it for the transparency part. Uh, now, please go to the next video to learn more about the importance of relevance. Thank you.